in the last session we have seen what is asynchronous sequential circuit what are its classification what is the difference between the two in today's session we will do an analysis on the fundamental mode asynchronous sequential circuit okay so in this the problem would be they would have given the logic diagram given the logic diagram so they will ask to frame your transition table and your primitive flow table okay here what are the steps involved from the logical diagram you have to frame the equation once done with then you frame your state table once the state table is done with the second step you frame your k map then the third step is form your transition table the fourth step is form your primitive flow table okay now we will move on to your logic diagram as i already told you y1 y2 are the excitation variables which represents your next state whereas your x y1 y2 are the variables they are called as secondary variables which represents your present state now we will write the expression for y1 and y2 so what is your y1 it consists of two and gates and a or gate so put a plus here here you should avoid have a multiplication term x into y1 then x bar into y2 so this completes your y1 expression now we will move on to your y2 y2 what are the variables it contains here you are going to have x into y1 bar the same data is coming here so x into y x bar into y2 so the boolean expressions have been framed now we will move on to your next state table next state state table okay so in which what are the input variables that is your present state or your secondary variables here x y1 and y2 so you'll write the combinations from 0 to 7 in other words you can say in this form so each variable will have four states with your uh, one of the input okay that is your secondary variable being 0 0 and 1 1 what is the next step so we have to compute your y1 excitation variable y1 and y2 so what are the terms involved x into y1 x bar into y2 this x bar into y2 here also it is present so in this case x into y1 bar so as usual you can multiply what is x bar x into y1 0 into 0 x bar means 1 into 0 is 0 then here 1 into 0 is 0 in this fashion you will fill this table the next thing what is y1 y1 is x into y1 plus x bar into y2 so add these two terms and fill the table here similar way add these two terms and fill the table here so the next table gets finished okay so only with the boolean expressions you are going to fill the table once this is done with the first step is over the second step is to plot the k map okay so what is the k map here you are having the values so wherever the ones are there i have plotted in both the things okay one three four five all those things have been plotted here the next thing is you have to go in for your grouping so this is one two cell grouping what will be the answer for this 0 0 it is matching so x bar into y2 so this term now go in for this x into y1 okay the next thing the same this equation you are writing it here by drawing the k map okay the next thing here if you could see this grouping so 0 0 is matching so x bar into y2 this term then here it is x into y1 bar okay so the first step is your next table the next thing is your k map now we will move on to the important concept transition table so what is transition table so we have already told you this transition table is nothing but the table with the the state table with the binary assignment so you are going to do it with binary assignment okay so now what you are going to do in this transition table what you are going to do see what we have studied in your last class that is when you achieve a stable condition because in this circuit you do not have a clock pulse so the transition from one state to the other state it does not go in a proper sequence. So what are the things we have decided only when this excitation variable is going to be equal to your state variable. So then in that case the system will be stable and the data will be transferred to the output okay so for this we have to design a what is a uh, procedure okay so only when both the states excitation table is going to be equal to your secondary variable then the data could be transferred to the output since there is no clock here so what is the condition y is equal to y1 into y2 
So this is nothing but y1 into y2. So when I want to have, so this y should be equal to small y. So this capital Y data I am going to substitute in this small y. Okay. So in that case how I can do y is equal to y1 into y2 means these two data I am going to club together and write in the table. So with binary assignment this frames your transition table. So what is the value? 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 1. So, 0, 0, 1, 1. Then 0, 0, 1, 1. So, this 0, 0, 1, 1. Then the next data will come here 0, 0, 1, 1. Then we will come to here. So, 0, 1, 0, 1. Two conditions written. Then 1, 0, 1, 0. So, 1, 0, then 1, 0. So, fill the table. Once this is done with, once the transition table just you are going to multiply these both value capital Y is going to be Y1 into Y2. So, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. This you are going to fill it here. Once this is done with, what you are going to do? Whatever is the outer states, whether it is matching with the internal state. This says that the small Y's are going to be mapped with your capital Y's. So, you are going to check 0, 0. This is going to be a 0, 1 state and here it is going to be 1, 1 state and 1, 0 state. The same state you are going to map. Then in that case you are going to say both the things you are going to match and then in that case the data can be transferred to the output. Okay. Now you are going to have all these 4 states. Now these 4 states are going to be the stable states whereas the unrounded ones are going to be the unstable state. Now we will move on to the 4th condition. What do you have to frame? From the question, you have to frame your transition table and the primitive flow table. Now, we have come to the primitive flow table. What is this primitive flow table? Whatever is the state which is having one stable state that is going to be given a variable. Okay. So, that is the concept of primitive flow table. So, wherever you are going to have, first of all, we are just, you can assign in any form. I have taken in this form. A is 0, 0, B is 0, 1, C is 1, 1, D is 1, 0. So, with this, you just replace everything here. So, A means 0, 0, 1, 1 means C, wherever 1, 1 comes you put C, 0, 0 means A, 1, 0, 1, 0 means D and 0, 1, 0, 1 means D. Then you round off the states and in the outer also you write it in the same way. So, this completes your primitive flow table. Internally, what is the logic that is obtained? So, this is going to be the stable state which is attained. When this stable state is attained, input is going to be transfers to the output. Okay. So, with this I conclude today's session. So, what are the things we have seen? The next table, the K-map, the transition table and the primitive flow table. Thank you. Okay. So, in the next session, so we will be seeing about shift registers. Thank you.